What's up, everyone? Welcome to another podcast episode. This one is a special one because the guest we have is a celebrity, or at least I call her celebrity. Uh, she's a art artist, singer, actor, and whatnot. Uh, she's also gone to Harvard for her education. But this episode, we don't talk about education. We are not talking about her Harvard experiences. We will we will bring her back and we'll talk about that. Let me know in the comment section. But in this episode, we talk about intercultural relationship. Uh, she she also has an intercultural relationship and i of course have an intercultural relationship so we talk about that what challenges does it bring what are the cultural shocks and how do we tell our parents and things like that i hope you enjoy this episode it's a little different but i'm pretty sure it's going to add a lot of value so let me know what you think in the comment section avanti if you're watching this thank you so much for doing this really means a lot to me and our ud squad community thank you now enjoy the episode thank you avanti for doing this really means a lot to me and our UD squad community i say UD squad because we've just started calling it UD squad <laughs> i'm so honored to be a member of the UD squad and um <laughs> i'm a huge fan of what you do as well and everything that comes with it and thank you all for watching this and for requesting i think um you know UD and I, if we were in the same city right now we'd probably be hanging out Yes, you know. some of you might not know Avanti, so let's do a quick round, Avanti. Uh, that's going to be rare that people might not know you, but for people who don't know you, <laughs> let's do a quick round. Like, where are you from? What do you do? And all the fun stuff about you. Sounds good. Okay, so I am from Bombay uh, or Mumbai, India. I've also lived half my life in the U.S. I was born in Boston. I just graduated from Harvard. I also did a dual degree with Harvard and the Berklee College of Music. Professionally, I am an artist, a singer, songwriter, and a content creator. And um, I, let's see, fun fact. Fun fact, which I know y'all are going to roast me for, but I don't like chocolate. So there we go. Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> that, that, uh, I love chocolate, but, but that's, <laughs> that's amazing. I didn't know that you were born in Boston. I thought you were in you're from India and then you went to US for education and then you came back. Before we actually go there, I do want to talk about Howard like uh, what was it like studying and then you know after you said you graduated just recently and then you came back to India. Why not stay in the United States? That's a great question. So I was pretty clear even before going to Harvard or you know when I was there that I wanted to be self-employed and um you know I had the privilege of uh, having a father who is an entrepreneur uh, but my father came from you know very lower middle class families really struggled through it and I think one thing that I saw was the opportunity of having a a brand name to your to your name right like being able to go to a college like Harvard, um, if nothing else, it just sets you up with the safety net. And what I mean by that is, you know, you do have a slight advantage in terms of a door being open, right? So if you say you went to this institution, if I was applying for a job, somebody might take notice. And then after that, it's very much up to you and your skill set and whether you have. But knowing that and taking comfort in that fact, to me, actually, I truly believe that when you have a safety net, it allows you to take bigger risks. And so I was very comfortable in the fact that after graduation even though there were opportunities for jobs which would have paid me way more than I'm making right now let me tell yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um I wanted to take the risk because I never wanted to regret in my life trying to be a full-time artist, trying to run my own business and doing that. Mm. And um you know and 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 I recognize that that comes from a huge place of privilege, right? Not having to worry about um, a lot of different factors in life. And part of that comes from the safety net. Part of that also comes from having a supportive family that, you know, will be there to catch me when I fall. Uh, but that's really the, the main reason. The reason I'm not in the U.S., I would say if you asked me a year ago, I would have said that I would probably be splitting time between the U.S. and India. Mm. Um, but with Corona... You know, I had I had a choice to make within 24 hours whether I wanted to come back to India or not because they were shutting borders to yeah. non 
Indian citizens and I have an OCI, which is like a, essentially yeah. like a, you know, a lifelong visa, but they shut borders to that. So I was like, if I want to be with my family, I need to go now. Yeah. Um, and I think being here, you know, it's had its ups and downs in terms of everybody's mental health with the virus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it it made me realize even more so than I thought before, just the sheer amount of opportunity that exists in India, right? And I think there's there's pros and cons to both, right? There is a lot of opportunity in the US for some fields. There's a lot of opportunity in India for some fields. Mm. And um, it really depends on what you want to make of your life and the ability that you have, right? I have a home in Mumbai, for example. Yeah, yeah. I'm not moving here with with uh like very little that, money yeah, right. it's, it's not a great story to mumbai right yeah, yeah. and so having the ability to have that i always wanted to be able to take my learnings from my education my network everything abroad and bring it back in some way shape or form whether that's through sharing stories conversations and information whether that's through building things creating opportunities um and so yeah so the long and the short of it is I think now, you know, probably for the next few years, I'm going to base myself out of India primarily. I will be spending time in the U.S. and other places, you know, to tour and all of that whenever yeah. it's safe to back to yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, it was a very conscious decision, but right. I well, think the right. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's brave of you, and I, I think it's uh, amazing that you did take that decision and followed your heart and. And you took that risk, uh, leap of faith, uh, because I have rarely heard students, you know, who's coming for Ivy League and leaving U.S. opportunities and going back to India. Not that it's bad; it's just uh, it's very rare, and that's why I was very curious. And and I agree that you don't want to regret, and that's that's true. Like you, when you are like looking back in time is like, I wish I would have done it. You don't want to say that. Instead, you did it uh, and you're glad that you did it. So that's that's amazing. And I have to uh, tell everybody that if you don't know Avanti, please go and follow her on Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else. Uh, I've, I've uh, heard her songs and I've seen some of her content. I have to say your dad and your nani is my favorite uh, characters. <laughs> uh probably your dad is my favorite so because he's so like happy and so like smiling so positive <laughs> so, uh but but amazing content uh, for people who want to know more about howard she definitely puts out some of it uh, she uh, she puts out a lot of mental health content uh, fun content so so a lot of fun stuff uh, she does uh, so anyway, uh, I'm I'm gonna move back to move back to your dating life. Uh, so how was it? Like how did it all happen? <laughs> I know how how did it happen? How did you meet Stephen? And when when was it? Uh, like what happened? Tell us the yeah. tell us the gossip. I mean, it's a long story, and we're definitely gonna do a like how we met at some point. But the the long and the short of it is we met in college. So he was my senior, I was a freshman and I didn't think it was weird, but you know, like my little brother says, oh, that's a weird thing, you know? And um, well, like, people, well, what's the weird thing that she, he's elder? Thing. Yeah, he's a senior okay. guy and I was a freshman girl. Apparently there yeah. was this thing at college where it's like, ooh, that usually means <laughs> that you, you know? <laughs> um, but I think for me, what was interesting is I, so I've always had really close guy friends and growing up with a brother and a lot of my friends growing up were guys. And so to me, it was never like, Ooh, there's a guy and this and that to me. It was just, okay, people are friends. And then if I'm actually interested in you, then it'll take a lot more effort. And that actually came true because in Stephen's case, uh, he was definitely, uh, he thought he'd made it clear he was interested in me for a while and I was completely oblivious for <laughs> months. And then it became very clear. Um, but we met, you know, we, we it was very chance meeting. We met, he was, you know, advertising some student club and we just got talking. And then mm. we were actually working on another club. Um, there was a you know, the gap year society. I took a gap year before going to Harvard mm. and um, meeting. I'd gotten in, took the gap year, and you know I can talk about that at some point. But 
we were working on this thing. We would keep meeting. He asked me to like at least 20 dinners, most of which I said no to. Um, oh, but it wasn't wow. Like, oh, will you go out with me? It was very much, I'm throwing this dinner. I'm doing this. And I wasn't deliberately saying no. I was just busy. And so I think. Like, um, became yeah. a thing. But, but eventually it was interesting because I'm curious with, with yours and uh, Caitlin's story as well. I, uh, for me, Stephen was was my first uh, and hopefully only serious relationship, you know, mm. and um, I was going to ask you that, but uh, yeah, no, and see, this is where the similarity starts because I also met Caitlin through student club. Uh, and uh, so people who are watching this, please participate in student clubs. <laughs> you, <Exactly. know. laughs> you might find the love of your life. You never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, we, I was a uh, president of Indian Student Club in my college, in my university, and she was uh, uh, like a leader or like a secretary or something at her like a club called International Students Club. And they wanted to host Indian Cultural Night. And that's how we met. Uh, she contacted me and then, you know, I we hosted this cultural community night where we talk about India and Indian culture and that's how we got to know each other. So it, for me, it was like we, we, we were like, we started talking within a week. Uh, and then after that, like in two weeks, I knew that this is it. Like she, she is my girl. Like in, it was so like, so uh, uh, evident to me that it, this is it. Like, I, I don't know, like I just felt it. Uh, like it's, it wasn't like love at first sight, but it, definitely was like two weeks at first sight <laughs> you know there's this thing when you uh meet certain people when i so steve and i were friends for a few months before we started you know officially dating or whatever and during those times i remember distinctly there was this one evening where we hung out for 12 hours and again i should have known that meant something but you know whatever <laughs> and i remember feeling really uncomfortable the next day nothing had happened um you know physically or otherwise mm. but I felt uncomfortable because this is one of the first times in life I felt so comfortable around a person that I could be completely vulnerable with them mm. and it didn't matter the cultural context and barriers you know um obviously and we'll I'm sure you have multiple questions about this we'll go into what it's like to act yeah. in reality being in an intercultural relationship but there was just something, I think there's something about two souls, regardless of other external mm. societal cultural factors, connecting at a deeper level. Yeah. Um, you never know why or what the reason is, but it happens. And, and right. that's that, right? Like you feeling that Caitlin is like, yes, that yes. She, she's my Bundy. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, no, totally. You call her Bandi, and does no, she call you? Oh no, no, no! I call her. I call her either. I call her love. I, I, I think pretty much I call her love. Uh, that's that's what I call her. Or yeah, honey, that's... honey. Sometimes I call her honey. And when we call each other by name, we're like, oh, am I in trouble? <laughs> like she's calling me from my name. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like you know. Sometimes all of a sudden she's like, Yuri, come here. I was like, oh my god. Like, what did I do? Did I not do dishes or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't does that happen to you? What do you guys call each other? I uh so he calls me he used to call me beautiful and he still does. But because he's been learning Hindi recently, oh. he's gotten really into a bunch of so he calls me now, he calls me Janji, which I oh, think Oh nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It <laughs> is cute. It is cute. Um, what what do you call him? I call him babe. Or baby. I feel like I'm, you know, so, like the... Uh, so the, unique. The, the, so unique. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes I call it like baby John or something, but it's more... It's yeah, but, that. But, but does that happen like where uh, you've been calling each other that name and then all of a sudden she he's, he's like, Avanti, uh, I need to talk to you. Like, you know, something. So you're like, oh gosh, like, what did I do? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a special power that, that girls possess over guys in a relationship where it's like that tone when you yeah. call the name. So if he says my name, I'm like, whatever. But if I say his name, sometimes he's like, 
Mm. Yeah. Do I have to do that not do the laundry? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 No. I, so so that's what you already answered it. I was going to ask you like, is that is this your first relationship? And it sounds like it is. Uh, so uh, like I couldn't like. I wanted to ask you, like, well, how was it compared to Indian relationship or Indian dating if you had been in? But it's not. So what? I like, mean, well, well, even though I hadn't been in relationships, it doesn't count. Because I think that when you're in a relationship, you, you experience a lot of things you don't in just friendships or in just casual, like what we used to think was boyfriend and girlfriend in high school. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think the the couple things that i would find different right if that's your, your yeah that's question, it. yep yep is number one i think this is not true across the board uh but a lot of guys i grew up with even guys who are my very close friends indian guys unfortunately many of them have grown up with a conditioning a very deep-seated conditioning of just gender roles and mm. the way in which um that exists in society right mm. and especially because I, I went to school with a lot of people from you know upper middle class backgrounds and who've grown up with relative wealth and I think even in those communities a lot of that conditioning exists that this is a woman's job or mm. this is you know and it, I mean exists across the board so I think for me that was the first thing not to say that for all non-indian folk or all white folks are you know like the beacon of of uh right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Roles. like that is definitely not true no but um you know i think for me it was really really important because both my parents raised me to be very independent mm. that whoever i was with regardless of the background would respect me as an equal partner would not have you know certain expectations out of me of feeding into a family structure as like eventually as a buffu or something of that nature. Mm. Um, it's very important to me that that was not the case, you know, and um, that may be whatever people might have different uh, viewpoints yeah. from me. Totally. You know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. And, and that's just, that's just your opinion. And, and say, I have the same, same, very similar opinion. Like I I've been in a relationship which uh, with Indian girls before and again there's no like offense to Indian community or American community but very same like I I always wanted a girl to have their own identity in a relationship like I never wanted to have a partner who has their own career ambitions and life and leave everything for me that that would make me feel so bad that now that she's married to me i don't like really own her like i want her to still pursue her dreams i want her to you know whatever she wanted to do whatever education she got because of what xyz reason i still want her to pursue it and and that was my main thing to have a partner when I, like when i was looking for a partner or when i look like those are the things you look into your partner is like you know she i want her to be independent so yeah. so yeah i i totally know what you mean uh, by that yeah. and the large sub mentality if you know what i mean uh yeah. was that i just did not want to and and again that could have come in any cultural shape or form yeah. but that was my experience um and so in comparison i don't have a intimate relationship comparison to it mm -hmm. but i do have frameworks of reference you know yeah um, yeah so yeah yeah no totally but just one of the things which i think is like uh wanted to know what your opinion is like what i've seen like my friends who are now either have, like either have a girlfriend or are in a relationship or are married uh, one thing i noticed a big difference is that they do everything together like as a couple mm -hmm. uh the in in my case in mine and caitlin it's it's different like i you know i'm doing my own thing she's right now doing her own thing like we i can still have my guy trips i can still do my road trips i even if i want to do solo trip she's just totally fine with it and same thing with her like if she wants to do her thing it's totally okay uh how is that for you and steven is that same or is it 
like you guys do everything together? So we've been together for over four years now. And um, the first year we, first two years we were in the same city because the first year after he graduated, he was still in Boston. But the other two years we were long distance. Um, and when I say long distance, it's not different cities. I was studying in the US and then going back to India frequently. And he was between China and Vietnam. So mm. it was, you know, across the world and wow. uh, and to navigate that was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, until, you know, very recently, it's been a month now, a little over a month. He's he's here in Bombay with me and my family. We hadn't seen each other in 10 months. Um, wow. Yeah, that's so rough. It, yeah. it was definitely rough. And so we, I think both of us, similar to you and Caitlin, it sounds, respected each other's independence. And mm -hmm. I think my my parents never they were a good model for of love for me you know but they were mm. also introduced so it was not necessarily like a i could say an epic love story yeah. the one thing mom used to always emphasize is that respect first and mm. i kept that with me in all relationships professionally and personally but especially with someone you want to be a partner right um respect is so 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 important Yes, And so to me, having somebody who respects the fact that you need time and space and have the ability to do your own thing is so important. And if you're in a long distance relationship, you have to have that respect and you have to have that trust because you're not doing things together. Yes, you know? totally, um, totally. And, and so, you know, to, to answer your question, we've definitely dealt with that. And it, it almost feels absurd to now be in the same house for <laughs> such a long time. <laughs> but but it, it's beautiful. It's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know we like we've, we've done a podcast right before this. And so I was like, you've been obviously doing your own thing for last three hours, four hours. And he's probably doing his own thing. Same with Caitlin, right? So I'm like, uh, I was like, is he frustrated that you're not giving time to him? Or like, is it like, eh, it's okay. You know, I, I have my own. Break, I'm like, I'm still here. I'm still, I'm just going to be busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. How was it uh, to, with, I don't know how, how your parents are open to this relationship. So my mine was like super, like a lot of drama. So uh, because I, I'm i like the first one to not marry out of my past system, but like to marry outside my whole country. <laughs> so, so it's a whole another game level, right? But what was it for you when you told your parents? Because now he's obviously living with you. So that's another, uh, like you, you are in living kind of a living relationship without even getting married so what yeah. how was it like how did you tell your parents and then what is it like now I think my the generations in my family have been setting it up so my grandmother all my grandparents married for love and they all met in medical school nice. um, and so my dad's parents married outside of caste my grandfather was a much lower caste than my grandma so she mm. broke that barrier first then both my parents are from different communities. My mom's Punjabi, my dad's Maharashtran. Mm. Um, so I guess the next step is, you know, going beyond the country. And <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at it from that perspective, it's only a logical next step. You know, maybe my child marries someone from Mars, who knows, but... Um, <laughs> possible, but, possible. Yeah, it's possible, you never know. Yeah, Alan, I, Alan Musk is planning for it, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it wasn't without drama for sure. I think, um, you know, all said and done, our, at the end of the day, our parents want to see us happy and, you know, settled. But sometimes they have a vision of what that looks like in mm -hmm. their heads mm -hmm. that may not match up with what happens in reality or what is true. Mm -hmm. And my parents were never against uh, him as a person. I think they were more just concerned about. Things like I've always mentioned that India is extremely important to me and that I wanted it to have a really big part to play in my life, right? Whether that meant living there for a significant period of time or whatever. And so their concern was, what does that mean if your partner is not from there? You know, mm. what does that mm. mean for you and your professional goals? What does that mean for blah, 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 right? Right. And right. this whole idea of 
by not being with somebody Indian, you somehow lose your Indianness. Yeah, um, yeah. And to me, I'm like, okay, but what does it mean to be Indian? And that's a whole other thing which we can talk about. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's it's taken a long, long time, four years for for this situation to now finally happen. But mm. um, I I think it takes it takes effort and work on all people's parts, right? It takes empathy and understanding on your partner's part to understand where the cultural nuance is coming from and a little bit of work it takes you understanding both parties you know right. on, yeah uh, frustrations right and i don't know if you felt like this but there were times at which i felt like i was being torn apart in two different directions yeah um, and and not knowing what what that looked like so all in all i'm really grateful it's come to this stage but it's it's not been without its difficulties but i truly believe that you know if if you believe in something whatever it is whether it's love or whether it's passion or whatever you should go for it and stick by it because if it's meant to be it will meant to be It'll yeah be whatever it you will know. happen <laughs> yeah 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 no no i totally totally get it uh, but what but was it like um was it your parents who were concerned for you or was it the relatives uh, who are more concerned mm-hmm. about the stereotype so so I, i'll talk about my example like it, it wasn't my parents so much that they were concerned about caitlin uh, like they they talked to her when we were dating and you know they know obviously they they spoke to her and it was fine like they liked her because she loves different culture like not just indian culture but different world cultures and she loves to learn about it so so they just love how kind hearted she is and and everything about it but it wasn't my parents who were like the drama it was more of my relatives who had all this you know stereotypes that oh like americans don't really you know they're going to divorce you and they're going to do this and they they're so independent and all this stereotypes so that was like creating a lot more pressure for my parents rather than my own parents creating pressure for me obviously i did what i wanted to do even though my parents would have said no i would have still gone and did it just because i'm rebel in my family but uh, but was that same for you like did you face those taunts from your relatives or like stereotypes i think so until very recently and i actually made the reveal in a music video people didn't know i was in a relationship who were you know some of my relatives i i picked and chose in a few close family friends and adults in my life you know my friends and everybody knew but most people didn't know and i was very private about it despite leading us to my public life as an artist right yeah um, and so now i'm seeing what that looks like and i think it would have been a lot of you know this gossip and things that you're talking about but because my parents are so okay with it they have no choice but to be supportive in this context you know right even um, though they might do back talking uh, but, yeah. but or they that, might have otherwise spoken right. about it you know yeah. um at this point it's literally my parents introducing or you know it's it's not it's not like oh look who your daughter is going around with and <laughs> right right and i think the difference is also everybody can see the i think it it's the the concern right this idea of losing your culture is will the other person hold space for whether their traditions or languages or you know food or whatever that might be that is important to you um and all of that exists in my relationship for sure and i know yes yes well totally um and you know for me i mean so steven lived abroad he used to live in china and vietnam and he has no qualms about making india one of his homes as well mm-hmm. you know um, and so i think for, from that perspective when you see that initiative from another person then you understand a little yeah. more yeah i will say though sorry no no go ahead. uh oh, i was boy. just going to say i was just going to say i think it is a little bit easier since we're talking about intercultural relationships generally i think it is a little bit easier when your partner is white as opposed to your partner being from another community which is harder to understand like i think in some really that's so yeah. interesting i would not I, think that i would think uh, it would be much easier to convince that he's his indian uh, versus is a man i'm not indian, i'm saying if, if it's indian that's easiest right but i'm saying second to indian is is somebody being white 
as opposed to somebody being Asian or black oh, or oh, religion. Oh, I see. I see. You know? I agree to that. I I think I probably, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And uh, what, what are some of your tips to girls uh, who are watching this and maybe they are in this relationship where they have... Uh, because you know your parents are like super modern and they have your parents have this history of marrying someone outside their community but not everybody has that and i'm i'm not talking about just the girls who have relationship with americans or just white uh, i'm talking about even having a relationship who are not from their own community what is your advice uh, to them how should they convince their parents because that's biggest problem like for you it was easy to tell them for me it was easy because i know i have a lot more control on my like family like i can say things to them but not everybody has that privilege to share that hey this is my girlfriend this is my boyfriend uh, it's very common over here at least in the united states but you as you know that in india people don't even share that until they are like at the marriage stage and where their parents are thinking about marriage that's when they reveal it like hey i already have this guy or a girl Absolutely. what's what's your advice how would you make that conversation with your parents um i think there's two pieces right before even having the conversation with your parents i think you as especially as a young woman and if you are in india we are just so societally conditioned into playing a certain role that just make sure whoever you're with no matter what background they're from that you are able to stand strong in your own stead and whatever you want from life if you're somebody who wants to you know be a ambitious career woman that you have the space to be that if you are somebody who wants to have many children or do whatever you have the space to grow and be that mm. um no matter who the partner is i think rather than um love is really important but so is respect and so is a partner who will help you grow right and so just finding that is really important and then when it comes to your parents that's the same thing that's the advice i give to parents about anything in fact a lot of people ask me advice on how to talk to your parents about doing a creative career right mm -hmm. or doing something that's a little yeah. bit off the beaten track and my advice is always the same which is Indian parents particularly but this is parents across the world all they want is to see you happy stable and settled their version of you being happy may be different from what you think um mm -hmm. but at the end of the day they just want that's why this whole idea of settle down right and the stability is so important so if you do something that's a little bit off the beaten path will you make money if you marry somebody who's not a picture of who they had in their mind will you be stable or will that person divorce you because of all these statistics they've read mm. right or will you have x y z issues because of whatever stereotypes they're catering to so i think it's important to show them examples and show them that it's possible number one um so you can show examples of you know successful relationships for example uh but the second is also to value the person at their core as a human mm. because all too often we we go in with with just this assumption about somebody just based on the way that they look and sometimes forget that the thing that's going to carry a relationship or the thing that's going to carry a life with somebody is shared values mm -hmm. and those values don't have to be indian sanskar like there can be somebody who's grown up right. with the same indian sanskar as you but does not actually value those things that you hold dear yeah yeah, yeah. right what would you say Yeah no I 100% agree I I think the I have learned this hard way so I think the two big decisions of your life you should make it uh, so that even if it falls on your face you own it and not your parents you don't have the excuse to go back to your parents because you chose it that's why it happened uh, one is career and second is your life partner I mean I think like you said yeah, your parents really just want you to see you know be happy there is definitely a lot of pressure on your parents how are they going to answer to their relatives or their brothers and sisters or their mothers and all this whole relatives that like, 
log kya kahenge whoever the log are in their life <laughs> yeah <laughs> right totally there's there's just so much pressure on them uh, but i think once you win their heart uh, it's fine uh, so you really have to convince them that you are happy this is this is what you want with your life and you are happy uh, with this person and this person is going to you know make you happy keep you happy for your life uh, and mm-hmm. and think about it like your parents probably are not going to spend time as much as you are going to spend time with your partners for that entire life so respect your parents but even like if you have to i would you know like try to convince them like try to argue with them like understand their reasoning what is their reasoning is it is it really the religion caste uh, community or is it the people most likely it's going to be the people who are thinking like oh my god what what your daughter is going you know doing something else i i think yeah. that's going to be most likely the reason and obviously then there will be some who are very strongly religious people that's a different story where they are like is he going to follow our religion or is she going to follow our religion or the culture that's that's a whole another level that's a whole level and i think you know you brought up an important point intercultural relationships are hard work right yeah. and they're often harder work than monocultural or whatever you want to call it just because this society is more accepting of it mm. and so with your partner you have to be understanding of them um and also be very upfront that if they want this to work it's going to take a little bit of work on their end yeah. they're going to have to you know for example like family is very important to us in in india and it is yeah. important to people in parts of the world but the understanding is different the level of uh, interaction you might have with family or whatever yes and explaining that and explaining where it's coming from what is important what's not and being able to draw those boundaries on both ends is really important mm-hmm. yeah totally totally yeah and it's it's yeah it's it's just so interesting this whole intercultural relationship is like my favorite thing to talk about because it's i mean i have very less friends who are into this but who are i like to talk about how they went through this whole process and how they went through this whole thing so that's that's i'm glad we are doing this uh, so now i want to talk about like fun fun like cultural shocks like how did you figure out like uh what was that comfort level in your relationship where you felt like okay i can share this cultural aspect of my relationship i guess not that's not even really cultural thing but it's just what was that yeah uh like levels you feel like okay now i can share this i i can do this and i wouldn't be i wouldn't have to worry about it you know that makes a lot of I, i'll i'll give you something really random but one thing i was so happy about i met even was the fact that something that's really important to me both from a cultural perspective but also a hygiene perspective is that when you're in your home you take off your shoes like that was just yeah. really important to me and he already did that so i was like yes i don't have to explain why shoes on the bed are a bad idea you know? yeah yeah <laughs> so right battle one but i think and this sounds similar to your story i was able to expose him a little bit because we were in you know educational spaces that celebrated diversity so i would take him to a lot of you know these india nights and this and that um so that he would be exposed a little bit to more of the food more of the culture the dances the festival things like that which in my opinion are important but they're still surface level right yeah yeah not necessarily what makes up uh the background but i think um some, something i guess fun is like or not fun but i there's certain words that you have that you just feel more comfortable with so you know i no matter where i am i usually call water funny or like i say i, I need to do so soon instead of saying yeah. i need to <laughs> yes you know yeah. what i mean yeah. um like the moments i could be like or or I'm, even I'm, you know even like i i think uh, uh, so this is uh, like did, were you did you ever i don't know if you did but in india it's common to say like i'm going to susu or i'm going to party or like you know it's it's not big deal but over here you don't do that <laughs> I, i guess they don't do that right they, they don't openly announce that hey i'm going to do that <laughs> so that was something i had to like 
I, it was so common for me to just do that. And she was like, why do you have to announce that? I was like, uh, that, that's what we do. I want to. <laughs> yeah. No, or like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I, this is another cultural shock which Caitlin had is like, when she visited my family, it's, it's okay to burp, uh, at least in my family. <laughs> uh, so, so she's like, oh my God, like you can do that? I said, yeah, you do. <laughs> so, so, so I don't know. You have that experiences with uh, Stevens where he's like, wow, you can do this in, in your family or you cannot say that. Oh, okay, you cannot say that. <laughs> yeah, I think one thing is, this might just be a family to family thing. Uh, he's noticed that a lot of my family members are very opinionated and mm. we have no shame in being like, no, you're wrong and just cutting each other off. Oh, and, yes. You know, yes. He did it. It's just like, what does that mean? Or, you know, I used to be family members or relatives or family friends. Um, they would be like, you know, it's it's a polite thing to thank them for something. But Hamari, may, people are like, thank you, you care your family, you know, that kind of vibe. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Whereas yeah. he says thank you for everything. So it's, it's yeah. just like explain that this means that you're close to someone, not yeah. that you are being rude and impolite. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the like, same thing. Like you know, my brother is not used to obviously American culture. So when India visited first time and she went into the elevator, uh, which which we call it lift, by the way, <laughs> right? Uh, so so like my brother was holding the the door so that it doesn't shut on its own, and and when Caitlin enters, she's like, "Thank you," and he's like, "Why do you have to say thank you?" Like that's just, like it's it's so like for us we now i'm so accustomed like used to saying thank you and sorry for every single thing mm -hmm. so you don't even think about it but that's like yeah you, people don't do that <laughs> it's, it's just different uh, anyway so i i want to now talk about like obviously we talked about how you told your parents but how was it for him and his parents when he introduced you to his parents like was it all normal for you, for you guys or was it drama over there or was it different? Was, what was the experience like? Okay, let me give you context. My mom is telling her friends now, almost four and a half years later, and she'll like have to preface it with a long conversation saying, he does this and he does that and he does this. And you know, it's like, <laughs> whereas for him, for the first birthday of his that we spent, or he basically I met him when he was turning 23 and then you know for his 24th birthday I put together a scrapbook of people who had been very meaningful to him across his life and it was all the way from childhood to now and it was people sent in letters it was a huge project it took me months to put together and his mom has six sisters so I didn't know how else to reach out to them so I was in touch with his parents so I you know sent them he'd introduced us but we hadn't like met met at that point We'd only met for, you know, half an hour. And it was they were totally chill. Like, it didn't matter. But I, I asked his parents, I said, oh, can you connect me with his aunts? Whatever. I'm happy to send an email. You can say I'm his friend. Whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. I wake up the next morning with uh, emails in my inbox. And the, the subject lines in capital letters, Stephen's girlfriend of auntie puts together scrapbook. And I'm like, that is not how my parents would introduce me to... You know, introduce my partner to family at all but it's so chill for them yeah. it's like this is just happening you know meet meet his girlfriend right right <laughs> I was like, whoa <laughs> yeah yeah so moving on to the final kind of things which i want to talk about is uh, tips for girls who are planning to a lot of my audiences are the students who are planning to come to united states and if they're girls who are even guys in matter uh uh how can they not really make American boyfriend or girlfriend, but how can they make friends or acquaintance, friends with Americans? How easy it is for them to do? Because for me, when I, you know, I, when I first came in, I would always have these thoughts in my head, like I'm overthinker and it's like, what if I do this? Like, what are they think going to think about me? Like, what is this American girl going to think about me or things like that? Like, but is that same for you girls or like what what's what's your advice for people to make friends? 
I think, so since we're talking about, let me just close out the romantic into this. Yeah. One thing I would say about Stephen is it's funny because when I met him, he was nothing I ever pictured that I wanted. What I mean by that is, you know, if I had like a picture of somebody in my mind that would have been a partner, they may have looked different, you know, they may have even had certain different qualities or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he, he, I've realized is everything that I needed. And there's mm. a huge distinction between that, right? And mm. unless I'd open myself up to being friends with people from different backgrounds, I would never have been able to understand that. Um, and so I think, I truly think relationships are what make the world go around all types, you know, professional, personal, friendships, the relationships you have with your parents and everything else. And when it comes to friendship, if you are going to be in any capacity where you are with people who are from different backgrounds, then you cherish that. Go out of your comfort zone, make those friends. It might feel super awkward at first because you don't know what to say to them. You might think that you're being judged. Um, There's all of these insecurities we have. But the beauty is when you're in a new environment, usually everybody's feeling the same way. Mm. And, you know, so going out there, putting yourself out of that little comfort zone and, and not knowing where that can end up is so important. And this is true across the board. Like if you go to a college in India, chances are you will meet people from all across India, from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Right? Yeah. Um, don't just stick with people who've grown up in the same neighborhood you've grown up in. Mm-hmm. Be friends. Yeah make the conscious effort to make friends with people who are very different from you. If you go abroad, make the conscious effort. Some of my closest friends are from Iraq and Israel and Montana Mm. and like Brazil and just the most different parts of the world, of countries, of backgrounds. And that was a very conscious decision, you know, because I think it opens your mind up. If nothing else, it's a beautiful learning experience. And you learn a lot about what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy about the world. It's a way to experience different cultures through those lenses. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. while it, it, it's, it, I think it's like the, you, uh, if they are not taking the first step, like it's just taking that first step. Like, you know, maybe exactly. you are scared that what are they going to think about it? They are probably scared too. And if you do that first step, uh, they're going to be like, oh yeah, I totally want to be friends with you. And what's the worst that can happen? They say no, right? Yeah. Um, right. You move on. You were like, okay, that's a shitty person because they don't recognize. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, or a, a decent person with a shitty attitude. You know, it's or, just- or just a person who probably you you don't know, like. Maybe they have different ideas, thought process, opinions. You. Okay. you know, it's not everybody in India is your friend, like right? So. so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, totally, totally. Again, I I know we have so much to talk. I I I did not plan this to go so long. I probably it's like more than an hour now, but uh, we have so much to talk. And I know there's like a lot more things we're gonna. I want to talk about creator yeah. aspect of it, and I want to talk about educational stuff and all of that. But we'll I'll bring you back on our podcast so that we can do this you again. Want, you all want a part two? You have to let Yuri know. So yes, comment, comment. Out. Yes, comment and <laughs> let us know. But anyway, thank you, Avanti, for doing this. For people who don't know Avanti, please go and subscribe. I'll put the link in the description so you can go and subscribe to her awesome content. Uh, she's releasing her song song very soon. I don't know if your song will come out first or this will come out first. <laughs> we'll see. You can say I'm releasing it soon or her songs come out. So you can yeah, say yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was just saying I had such a great time. Um, being on this podcast, chatting with you. And, you know, even though this is the first time we're interacting face-to-face, it feels like we've known each other for a while. Yeah, totally, totally. I, I don't think we, I, I don't think I felt like I was talking to you for the first time. It's like, we, yeah. we are like a friends and we're just having this conversation. So that's always awesome. Until our next one. Keep smiling and keep hustling. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs>